What is up everybody, it's your favorite Pac-Man gamer Tricky, and today is going to be the start of the guide series for this. So today I'm going to be showing you some basic stuff with Pac-Man, and basically how to play him. Um, I'm not going to get into too much advanced stuff today because that video would be over an hour long if I did. There's just so much to explain, but I'm trying to, um, in this video I'm going to try and explain low percent combos, basic fruit knowledge, and basically the style of play that you try to go for when you're playing Pac-Man. Um, so with no further ado, let's just jump right into it. So, um, so for a basic review of Pac-Man's moves, you have his jab, which is three hits long. It um, does 9.6 damage total. It's not, you know, it's nothing great, but as far as it goes for a jab, it's okay for tech chasing. It's okay for just trying to mash it out of shield. But honestly, it's not the greatest move ever. Um, his forward tilt is going to be about 10 damage, 9.6 damage as well. It's pretty good as a poke move. It's actually pretty good if you, um, say you need to poke the, poke the hydrant like that. You can get some good damage off of that. It's nice for a quick setup. Um, and then his dash attack. It's going to do 12 damage on its own. It does combo into itself. And it's generally a good move for pushing on shield. Especially because you can do aerials so quickly out of it. Or other attacks so quickly out of it. Because like you see. See if I dash attack him right here. I can immediately like nair. Or if I dash attack him, like I can even immediately just go right into jab. So his dash attack can cross up on shield as well. So basically dash attack is just extremely nice because it can cross up on shield. It does good damage and then it sets up for okay combo potential too. Like if you knock him up in the air, you can immediately follow up with fair. So like I missed there, but if you knock him up in the air, you can follow up with double jump fair. He's a little bit too high percent for it to work now, but in any case. I'll reset him back to zero, and so dash attack's a nice attack. Um, then you have his down tilt again, just kind of a poke move, and his up tilt. It doesn't seem like it does much at first, and I'll be the first one to admit it. I didn't use it much when I first started playing Pac-Man because the hitbox is really, really small and really right above his head. But the thing is, he does have moves that can send him right above your head. So if you're able to get that kind of move, like an up throw. You can up tilt, up tilt, and then you can go for another grab or even an up air. Because if you can get those, his up air is an incredibly good combo tool. So up tilt, it's hard to use at first, but once you get good at using it, it actually has extremely good mix-up potential. So I would recommend using this because um, a lot of times if your opponent, if you're up throw up airing like a lot, it's not technically a true combo. So if you're up throw up airing a lot, and your opponent will start to immediately air dodge, and if they immediately air dodge, you can get that read and then just up tilt. And then if you up tilt, it leads into more strings, and you can keep grabbing, up airing, and uh, forward airing, because those moves all have a very nice knockback. Um, so let's talk about aerials, because his Pac-Man's aerials are some of the best in the game, in my opinion. So first you have Nair. Um, Nair, it does 10 damage, and it comes out frame 3. So Technically, it's frame. It's frame. Um, it's gonna be frame six because of the um, the, the three frame jump squat. So technically, it's frame six. But um, in terms of a, in terms of like really quick out of shield aerials, Nair is incredibly good at that. It can combo break. It can do. It can do your taxes. It's a really good move. Um, it also has the potential if you land with it to to combo into other things like grabs and fares and anything else. And you're just going to see that like once you hit one falling nair, it can immediately change to a fair and then another nair and then an up throw and then an up tilt and then an up air and you just just like that, it's 52 damage. Like it's just, his nair on landing has incredibly nice combo potential. And you'll see um, big players like T do this all the time, on uh, especially on PS2. He'll like land with fair, and, or he'll land with falling nair, immediately go for fair, and immediately go for another nair, and then just grab up throw, up tilt on that platform under PS2. And then you're going to see him immediately go for an up air and finish the combo with about 50 damage. It's just big damage and doesn't even require a Galaga. So Nair is good for that. Fair is uh, just, it's an incredible move. Fair is really, really good. It's hard, it's a little bit slower out of shield because it is um, frame 5 instead of Nair, which is frame 3. So it's not as quick out of shield, but it's generally still a good move. Um, it's really good because it basically chains into itself. If you see... That, that I'm getting like one or two hit combos there. And it's actually good for tech chasing as well because if this Bowser doesn't tech, 
I can immediately follow up with like a Nair or another Fair, and and you can actually just drag people off the stage, and if they jump, you can just Fair Chain them to death. Because they won't have enough uh, stuff to recover, and that's really simple Pac-Man stuff. A lot of people don't jump after they realize why it works, Um, because a lot of people are better than that, but still, low level play. You can just keep jumping and fairing and then people will die, so it's kind of a fun move, you can just fair chain people. And then especially if they do get fair chained but they have a good enough recovery where they're not going to die from it, you can just fair chain them and then immediately hit them with, with say, like a key afterwards and then and then that'll kill. And you see that's like, what is this, this, this gr big green box, I think that's, yeah, that's FD, so that will just straight up kill. Um... Again, you'd have to do it off stage, so just conserve your jumps and whatnot, and you should be fine making it back because Pac-Man has an amazing recovery anyway. But any, but in any case, moving on, you have back air. Back air, it's it has fairly okay range. It has a weak hit and a strong hit. The strong hit does about 14 damage, and the weak hit does only eight. So just you know, be be mindful of when you get the weak hit, when you hit the, get the strong hit. The weak hit's obviously better for comboing, although. It's only got so much combo potential, and the bat, the strong hit can kill at at a high percents. It can also the other thing that the um, back air is really really good for is for doing barely enough damage, where it doesn't knock over the hydrant, but it basically makes it so that the hydrant can be knocked over by any other attack. So you can see if I back air here, I can like literally just up B, and it sends the hydrant at a very nice angle. For say, I back air here and then I fair and it sends the hydrant that way, or you again back air, up air. Oh, I messed it there. But back air, up air, and it sends it at that angle. So back air is just really nice for setting up hydrant tricks and whatnot, especially when you have fruit. So you can like back air and then immediately B reverse a fruit and get the and get the hydrant going. Um so in general I would recommend I would highly recommend using back air when you're setting up hydrant a lot and also if you if your opponent's up in the air and you can't get a kill, um, you you will need to get good at, at raw aerials. But um, in general, once you get it, once you get so you can hit start hitting bears a lot. You can do it on ledge. You can generally it's like a lot of other bears where it can kill at or at late percents, and it's generally just kind of a strong hitbox. It's not the fastest move ever, so you know it does linger for a while. But but you're not gonna have a whole. You, you see, you can't really out cancel it that well. Um, whereas Nair, whereas Nair landing cancels the landing really well, so does Fair. And then the last one is, um, and then the next move. I'm sorry, not the last one. But the next one I'm going to talk about is Down Air. It's good for edge guarding, and it's also good for for covering a landing if your opponent's being sloppy. Um, again, it's not good for too much else other than that. Like you can potentially get a few interesting combo strings like that, but again, it's not. You're not going to hit that. At, crazy often um so well you can hit like a few things here and there with it it's not like a one size fits all move like let's say um nair or fair and so generally if someone's going off stage it's it's like it's good for lead it's good for edge guarding going down because if you say jump off you can dare really really low and then still make it back because you have an amazing recovery and so dare is really really nice for that as well but again, you don't want to be using it everywhere because it does have it does have its fair amount of landing lag. So if you you know if you throw this move out carelessly, then that, then someone will will just step back and sm and smash attack you, and it's really really easy to get caught by. So don't get into a habit of say I do this one a lot where you you're you'll hydrant and you immediately dare off the side because if they don't get caught by the hydrant, then you know you're gonna try and catch them coming out of shield with that dare. But if they just step back and smash you, then you are going to get hit by it. So you you know you don't want to develop that bad habit because I'm still trying to break that habit. Um, so the next move we're going to talk about is up air, which doesn't seem incredible at first, but when you learn how to use it, it's actually incredibly good just because it swings so big and it has such nice knockback angles. Um, so you're going to see that you can really swing this move a lot. Um, that's coming down with it, but again, if you um. It chains well out of grabs, so you can up air, and then you can start chains with up air too. If you up air here, and then up air again, and then up air again, and then up air again. Or that's that was a back air, but you get the idea. You can up air chain pretty nicely. It's it's like it's like Mario or ZSS, but just kind of worse. Um, 
because it comes out a little bit slower, so you need to time it a little bit better, plus Pac-Man's not as fast in the air as either of those characters, so you can't, like, chain it into a kill. But if your opponent is coming down with a, with a bad landing, you can jump up really high and just do an up air. If they're at high percents, it can kill off the top. It's just kind of a rare thing. So go for it if you really think you can hit it, but otherwise be careful because you don't want to... You just don't want to get hit by anything. So, obviously, his aerials are really, really good. Down is probably the worst one. Um, Nair is best at a shield. Fair is probably best for setting up combos. Up air is really good for landing and really good for stringing together juggles because juggles with Pac-Man are very nice. Um, again, with DI, it's a little bit harder, but in general, very nice to play around. Um, what is this guy doing over here? Get back there. Until you come over here. So, next, um, let's talk about his smash attacks. So, forward smash, uncharged. Oh, I'm just gonna do 19 damage, but you can oftentimes get a little bit of charge on it, and it just then does like 21 and much more knockback. So, forward smash is gonna be one of your best kill options because of a little handy thing I'd like to call Bell. Um, <clears throat> you've all probably been hit by it online if you're watching this video. It stuns you, and then you just get forward smash for free. Um, and then downs. So forward smash is crazy once a knockback is disjointed it you know it's a great move it's just that you can't be throwing it out willy-nilly because it does have ending lag so you want to make sure that you're not just throwing this move out like crazy because if you don't if you start just throwing this out your opponent's going to start reading you for it and you don't want to you want to be unpredictable um again you only want to throw this out as like a really like a big mix-up option or if you get bell because otherwise if you're just throwing it out willy-nilly it's not going to be that useful because it's not that you know not no smash attacks are good to just throw willy-nilly and forward smash is no exception then you have down smash or i'm sorry forward smash comes out in frame 16 it has an active hitbox um and, but it's much stronger than down air or down smash i'm sorry it's much stronger than down smash which comes out in frame 15 so it's a little bit faster to use down smash and it covers both sides but it is much weaker knockback you're gonna kill way earlier with forward smash than you will with, with a down smash, but that is just kind of the way it goes with Pac-Man. I'll knock him up to a little bit of a percent so you can see this in action. Let's say, let's put him at, say, 100. So, and then I'll show you a tra tra trajectory guide. So, we'll say he's at right about zero. This, this forward smash right here is going to kill. Whereas, if you see, um, down smash, not going to kill. Much weaker move. It has a lower angle, so if you want to use it as a ledge to try and gimp your opponent, it is a possibility. Just generally a worse move. Um, and then... So next up is up smash, not the greatest move in the ever, but it does have a fair amount of knockback. Nothing crazy, but um, generally it's good because if you hit your opponent with a bell when they're too high above the ground, it can in fact lead in, like when you can't hit forward smash, say your opponent's like, like too high for forward smash, you can just run up under them and up smash. It does get kills quite frequently, it's just something that you have to, you know, know when to use and when you actually can get a kill with it. It's still very nice, but, you know, it's not as nice as getting them on the ground where you can forward smash. And then, um, next up we're going to talk about his specials. So, again, this, his neutral B special is the uh, craziest one he has. Um, so it can, it, there's eight different options, which is quite a lot. Um, so... I'm not gonna get too much in depth for it because I'll, I'll save that for a next video where I have combo fruits with key, or combos with fruits. But in general, um, Terry's kind of weak. It has this usage like that um, where you can drop into it. Um, strawberry is kind of the same concept deal. That's not strawberry. Um, it does the same general thing. But, um, again, they're just kind of weak moves. They can edge guard pretty well, actually, because you're going to see, just get this rid of this orange. But if you, if you throw this there, it actually has a very nice angle. 
Um, if you throw this at someone, it can just, it can gimp. Again, he recovered high, so it doesn't really matter there, but... Um, this Bowser doesn't want to recover low on the right side like I want him to, but... In any case, you can throw this out while edge guarding, and it can cover space for you very well, apply a lot of offstage pressure, especially against opponents with worse recoveries. So it can gimp, um, it's just kind of, it can be kind of difficult. So, yeah, he's not gonna listen, but in any case, Cherry and Strawberry both have their, their niche uses. They're not incredible, but they're okay, actually. So one of the things that's fun to do with them is if your opponent's not playing that well, you can you can fruit drop um you can Z drop a fruit on their head and then hit an up smash and that is going to kill Bowser at a really late percent because he's Bowser and he's really heavy. But you're gonna see that work anyway, and um, that's just basic stuff. But Cherry and and Strawberry have their uses. Another big use for them is um. If you don't have a fruit ready or you don't have a particular hydrant setup ready and you want to get something going really quickly, um, you can just throw the fruit at the hydrant. And then not only that, now you can um, now that you have fruit in hand, it's a very it's very good because you can Z drop and for Z dropping you just press the grab button while doing nothing else in the air and you're just going to drop it straight up. And if you're going to see it, it has usage like like if you say Z drop from up here and then immediately hit it with back air, it's going to do enough damage to where back air sends it. So it has its usage there. Um, and next let's talk about orange. So orange is an interesting one because it um, it's probably the least versatile of all of them because you just throw it straight up. But if you do catch it off someone, it suddenly opens up a lot more paths. You see, um, but there is this one combo that's pretty fun to hit. It's definitely a mix up. But if you essentially jump here, Z drop, and then back air them into it, you can hit them with a forward smash, and it's pretty cool. It, it, it requires a level of um, of skill for it, but again, it is pretty fun to do to someone. You feel like you outplay them every time you do it, um, but it requires a lot of setup. And the other thing is, when you Z drop that, your opponent's going to tend to shield a lot, so it's going to be hard to hit them with that back air when you're jumping over them because they are just going. A lot of times, they are just going to shield. But if they're not, you can get a cool clip out of it and say, oh, I'm the genius brain Pac-Man. But again, it's an, it's a situational trick, and most of these are. So then, um, let's move on to Apple. Um, really simple stuff here. It launches them straight up, which is very nice for um, combo angles at low percents. So if I put them down to like zero, say, then you're gonna see that here at about like 13-ish, yeah. This will chain, and you can get like 65% off of it, um, and Apple is very nice for that. It's also nice for killing at very, very late percents, like say, it, it's going to take a while to get them up to a percent where this will kill, because it doesn't just kill at 100, you'll have to kill at like 160 on Bowser, but in any case, what you can do is if you hit that Apple, it is going to launch him very high up. It's actually not going to even kill Bowser at 160, but... Um, the other fun thing you can do with, uh, with Apple is it has a lot of, it has nice hydrant launch angles, so if you say back air and then immediately throw the Apple at it, if it hits them, it's just going to kill. Um, it's very nice for that. The other thing that you can do, this is an advanced trick, but it's pretty fun, is um, there's a specific setup where you can throw Apple and launch it like that. Very fun thing to do but requires a lot of setup and a lot of, or it requires setup and it requires precise timing. So you're going to want to get used to actually using Apple before you even try something like that. Melon is not that different from Apple other than the way it sends. So Melon goes straight out and sends straight out and you can actually catch it. It's one of the, it's one of the, the three fruits that you can catch after you throw it without it bouncing off something. Um, and so you are going to want to have that on you. It's very nice um, because if you can throw it in any direction you want, if I can reset positions here and just get him off stage. But in any case, you can do this actually. You run off stage and then immediately throw it up and that actually recover covers a lot of recovery angles. 
Not to mention, if you just throw it like this, um, or, you, or if you throw it like, if you rebound it off the wall when you're edge guarding, I didn't quite get it there, but you rebound it off the wall, it does have a nice angle for covering high recoveries, so you can kind of play a lot of, um, like, ta almost tennis with the melon, where you can see, kind of, set up your angles, set up where you want to put it, and it is quite nice for that. Um, otherwise, it's also good, like, Apple for setting up Hydrant stuff, because if you can, like, you can set up a lot of Hydrant tricks with it, um, I'm not going to get too in-depth in into them today, because, again, first video, but you see that, um, a lot of times you can use Melon, and it does, it does quite a lot of Hydrant damage, even if I don't hit it, then if I hit it with Nair, it's going to immediately just launch. Um, the next one is going to be Galaga, and Galaga is a big one. Galaga is going to be your friend at literally almost every percent, besides high percents. Um, Galaga is just incredible, it's probably his best fruit. It covers space, It um, and it combos like crazy. So say, you know, it, it, if you see, it, it hits them twice. Um, even at low percents, and then, and then at, at like mid percents, it actually combos into itself there, and there's nothing they can do about that. And at high percents, you can even do something like this, where you, and that would kill. <laughs> That's a, called a Chinko combo, and well, I'll teach you guys how to do it in another video. But in any case, so Gallic is very nice because you can fare right into it a lot of times. And of course, I don't have it ready, but... And then that's gonna do a lot of damage right there, you see. It does like a... That did, that went... That took a basically from like 30 to 106. That's a 70 damage combo. Um, so if you throw a lot of fares and Galagas out, and you're trying to catch that Galaga with your fair, um, you're going to see a lot of results for that. But in any case, um... Galaga is just very nice in general. You're generally going to want to throw it forward because there are some specific uses where you can throw it up, but um, throwing it up is not that useful. Throwing it down is not that useful either. You're going to want to mostly throw it forwards because then you can get stuff like this. And you see that it combos into itself so well. It's just such a good tool for comboing because it basically suspends them in a spot, does damage to them, and you basically just get to wait and and get as much free damage as you want basically as long as you hit them with Galaga it puts them in disadvantage immediately and the next route we're going to talk about is Bell um so Bell is going to be very nice for say if I get him up to it's Bowser so let's say 120 um if you land a Bell and the one thing that you want to do a lot is catch Bell because throwing Bell in different directions is very nice but if you land Bell you can just forward smash for free, and that does way more than kill him. So you're gonna see that um, Bell is an incredible tool. Um, so in general, if you can hit Bells on people, you will be getting kills. It's Pac-Man's main kill option, Bell forward smash. Um, a particularly fun thing to do with Bell is one off and Z drop it right there and it shoots across the screen like a missile. Um, so you can get kills that way, they're pretty funny. Um, so in general, Bell is just going to be your main kill option. You can throw it in a lot of different directions, but I would recommend just sticking with the one direction when you start. Because, well, once you learn how to do Pac-Man, you can do things like that. Um, for right now, it's not going to be in general what you're looking for. Because like, you can do crazy stuff with bell combos because it does have a set knockback angle so you can learn how to do it but it is kind of confusing so you know before you go on just doing stuff like this and trying to kill with that first learn the basics um finally it's going to be i'm going to talk about key um key is generally a very nice move just because it sort of goes right through hydrant so it will just so it can catch people off guard that are not holding shield behind Hydrant. You can B reverse it off Hydrant, which is nice for immediately throwing two projectiles. You can jump, throw it. Generally, it's just it's a straight up projectile. It's like a Samus charge shot, but faster and smaller. Um, so in general, key is just a nice move 
for throwing right across the screen. It's like orange, but way better. Um, and then you can see hydrants, the next big thing that you're going to want to talk about. I'm not going to go too in depth of hydrant setups because God knows there's a lot of them, but hydrant setups are generally nice across the board. Um, the main thing you want to do is get backers on them. And then if you can, um, figure out how to use the water to your advantage. Like you can do stuff like water towards that F smash and all of a sudden I have way more range than I would have or throw this hydrant down here and just water grab. It's way faster. Um, and there's some cool stuff you can do with Hydrant too, but um, in this video I'm going to keep it basically down to water pushes you and you can launch it. Um, just be careful because your opponent can also hit it and launch it, so I wouldn't want to be the one who is getting the Hydrant thrown at them more than you're throwing the Hydrant at them, or more than you're throwing the Hydrant at the other guy, so be careful with that, but in general, down B is one of your best tools as well. Um, side B, niche tool. It's um, good across the board for recovering because you can recover basically from down here um, with it and it's just it can go really really long range. So you see if I jump double jump and then side B and then up B I can go really really far but um, again that's not exactly what we're looking for here so while um, side B had, does have its, its uses in hitting people you generally if you're going to hit people you want to have comboed into it beforehand because it's really easy to read um and there are certain ways to use it where it's not as easy to read but you can see exactly where he's heading so i wouldn't recommend just throwing this out i would recommend using it for recovering though because it's amazing at doing that um so in general side b good move but i wouldn't just throw it out all over the place because if your opponent reads you, then you can get um, absolutely slammed for it. Another fun trick you can do with side B is if you're really close to the ledge. If you point that thing down and then immediately, immediately sh if you point your stick down and left and then immediately shift it up and right after it goes over the ledge, you can immediately rebound like that. You can catch people off guard if they're not looking for it. But um, in any case, niche tricks out of the way. Um, Next we're going to move on to Uppy. Uppy is frame 3, so it comes at a shield really really fast. Um, it's like, it's as fast as Game & Watches, it doesn't have the hitbox or the usage afterwards that Game & Watches does, but it's still a frame 3 move, so I would still consider it a very good move. Um, so having a frame 3, you know, basically out of shield option, very very nice. If someone's really just hitting on your shield a lot and, you, and it's too fast for Nair to cover, Uppy away. They can't do anything. Also, um, if you use if you use this in the Terry matchup, his dome moves like Buster Wolf, where he just runs across the stage. You trampoline in the middle of that, he'll just hit trampoline and bounce up immediately. So do keep in mind that that um, it does stop a lot of people that a lot of charge across the screen moves. Um, I don't really use it for that much, except against Terry because Terry is very scary. So again. It has its specific uses, um, like one of the uses that it has is if you um, if you want to get a setup going at ledge, you can back air the hydrant and immediately up B, and then all of a sudden they can't get they can't they can't get up normally because they're all going to get smacked by the hydrant. Um, so up B is um, a good move generally. You do want to watch this when you're recovering because, like you see, um, while you can bounce off this trampoline, it can also be hit and your opponent can also hit it so or jump off of it so you want to make sure that they're not stealing your jumps away from it because you only get three and if they steal it right as it's yellow then they get to jump and you're left with nothing and you just fall to your death so i would watch out for that because if your opponent's playing smart they can't just steal that up be right out from under you so i would be careful when i'm using that to recover because if you just get gimped by it then that's the end for you because you weren't being careful with your recovery. So that's gonna be the basic rundown of all his moves. Again, you wanna play him like a you wanna play him like a zoner character. He has a lot of projectiles, so generally keeping people out is the best way to play him. Um so if you're not keeping people out, then well, you can box as well, because like like I said, his nair is really or his nair is really good. His up is good. You know his fares are good, but generally you don't want to like have to rely on boxing 100% of the time because there are better there are better characters with better buttons right in front of you. So you want to watch out for that. 
um, in general, just again, you don't want to be stupid when you're playing. You want to be zoning, you want to be setting up stuff, and you know, as far as setup skill, I'm going to go in depth with more of them in the next video, but with that being said guys, I think that is going to do it for the basic guide. Um, I know this is probably going to be my longest video yet, but there's a lot to cover, so if you guys want to see more of how to play Pac-Man, um, please do leave a like and subscribe and I will upload more because the next video is going to be covering fruit tech and, well, specifically how to use each fruit to its full potential. Um, and then hopefully if I get enough support on this, there will be hopefully a part three that's also hydrant tech. Um, so hopefully this is a three part series. It might have to be four or five, but I, I'm hoping it's only three. Um, with that being said, I think that's going to do it for today's video. Again, if you liked, please like. If you had something to say that I missed, that you think that I missed, you know, leave a comment below. I will be responding to them. And, you know, if you really, you know, if you really like this kind of stuff and you want to see part two and part three, do subscribe because they're going to be on the way soon. And, you know, with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Please do subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.